The real reason you don't want to spend time with God, the real reason is so hard to be disciplined and wake up and read the word every day and make sure that you are really meditating on God's word and really praying genuinely from the heart. The reason why you're not doing those things is because you don't see the value in it. You don't think that it's important enough for your time. So instead of spending time with God, you spend an hour on social media scrolling all day. Or you focus more on the worries of his life, you know, school, money. And then you end up forgetting to spend time with God. But if God was your number one priority, then you wouldn't let that happen. You would make sure that you're reading the Bible in the morning. Reading the Bible every single night before you go to sleep. Because it could be just like a relationship, a friend, or even spending time with family. Because that's a necessity to you. You spending time with your girl, or you spending time with your man, or you spending time with your family. Because that's a necessity for you, you're going to make time no matter what. If the job is taking too much of your time to spend time with your girl, or your man, or your family, then you're going to tell them to cut the hours. If you haven't spent too much time with your, your in your relationship or your family, then you're going to make sure that you spend time with them no matter what. You're not going to be worried about, you know, TikTok or Instagram or social media scrolling all day when you have something more important to do. So that's why in this video, I'll be telling you how to make God your number one priority in your life and five steps to be more disciplined with your relationship with Christ. And before we get into steps, the first thing you have to do is to understand God. In order for you to want to get into the word, want to spend time with God, you have to really understand why that's important in the first place. Because it's just like in a relationship. If you don't see the value in the other person and you don't really see them as important, then what you're gonna do, you're gonna either lead them or cheat on them. And you're not going to want to spend time with them at all. But that's exactly how our relationship with Christ is going to be. If we don't understand God, if we don't see the value in him, then we're going to cheat on him by sinning. We're going to continue to sin. If we don't really believe and have faith in God, then we're not going to want to read his word and praise him. So the reason why it's so important to get a relationship with Christ is not only because he loves you, but he also wants the best for you. So whatever you have planned in your mind, your passions or whatever you have planned in your life, he wants to give you that and more. But God is the one who made you. So he knows your true desires. He knows your true passions, what will really fulfill you. So if the devil tries to give you some counterfeit, like the love of the world, love of the money or love idolizing a relationship, idolizing another person, you will know that that's counterfeit and that's not true fulfillment because our true fulfillment comes from Christ. And another reason why it's so important to have a relationship with Christ is so that when the storms come, you will be ready. You will have a solid foundation. So when the storms come, you won't blow over. When trials and tribulations come your way, when you start getting attacked, you'll have someone to run to. Because yes, life may be good right now. Life may be great, even though you might not have the closest relationship with God. But there's going to become a time where you're going to really need God and you're going to have to run to him. And it's better if you already have that foundation in him before those troubles start to come. And obviously, the last one is he paid for your sins. He, he, he paid for your sins so he can have a relationship with you. So if you don't have that relationship with God, he's going to say on the judgment seat, depart from me. I never knew you. So that's why you have to get to know Christ right now. And don't waste your time on the temporary things of this earth. So now that you understand why it's so important to have a relationship with Christ, these are the steps to get disciplined. Because it's cool to have motivation because you can have motivation, you know, to go try to make a million dollars, but it's discipline that lasts. So the first step to become more disciplined is by praying. Prayer is more powerful than you think. So if you're having trouble with, you know, getting in your word, you feel like you're falling asleep every single time you try to get in the word, that could be a spirit trying to attack you so you don't get that relationship with Christ. Because the devil's job to keep us away from that relationship with Christ through fleshly temptations, worldly temptations. And so we have to pray for our daily bread. That's in the Lord's prayer. So we have to pray against those spirits so we can have the desire to go and read the word. And that's why we pray. We pray to go and ask God to help us through certain situations. We don't always pray to go and ask for things. Yes, we can ask God for things, but we also pray for strength to help us grow closer to him. Number two, the second way to start being way more disciplined is by scheduling your time with God. Just think about your relationship with God, just like any other relationship. When you go and spend time with your partner, you're gonna you know, schedule it most of the time, especially when it comes to dates. Well, in this walk with Christ, it's the same way. We are supposed to schedule time for God, make put time aside, make sure we don't do anything else in that hour or two hours just to spend time with God. 
So in the morning, it's best to set an alarm clock just to make sure that you're spending time with God in that hour. So when that alarm go off, you know, oh, it's time to read my Bible. Oh, it's time to pray and making sure you put everything else away. Because I'm sure your life is already busy enough if you're not spending that hour with God. You're already doing something. If your life is already busy, then it's easy to not read the word or pray when you don't have a set time. But when you schedule that time, it's going to be harder to miss it. Number three is your love for Christ. Your love for Christ is really what's supposed to keep you going. So you need to start really taking heed to the word, really listening to what God is saying to you. And when you really start to listen to the word, really start to meditate on the word and clear your mind off of anything and not just fall asleep while you're reading a Bible verse, that is when you start to fall in love with Christ and also putting your faith inside what the word is saying. So really believing what that word is saying. Because if you're reading the word without actually believing it, then it really does no, no benefit to you. It's not gonna be any fruit in your life because you can see like the Pharisees, they were re they knew like the whole Torah, they knew everything. They were in their word every single day, yet their heart wasn't for Christ. They had a whole bunch of religion, but no relationship. And that's what God wants. He wants a relationship for you. He wants a relationship with you. So make sure when you open that word that you are reading it to get to know him, really get to know his character, get to know how he lived, and reading the word so you can apply it to your life so you can live more like Jesus and serve at a high capacity like Jesus. Because God wants us to save souls. He wants us to read the word so we can apply it to our lives and save many souls. So we can be the light in this dark world. So really start reading the word to get to know him. Really start putting your faith in the word so that you can start to grow your love for Christ. When you build that love for Christ, that is what keeps you going even when you don't feel like it. Just like basketball, or any other sport. If you don't love the sport, then you're not gonna keep working hard in practice. You're not gonna get up at 6 a.m. and get some shots up because you don't love the sport, but it's the love of the sport that keeps you going. And that's the same thing with this walk with Christ. Number four, which really helps me out a lot, is the necessity to just lean on God. You see, when you feel like you don't need God anymore because blessings start to come your way or different things around you start to just unfold in your life in a good way, that is when we stop clinging on God the most. We stop reading the word. We stop spending time with him because we think everything is going to be all right. But when you switch your perspective and know that without God, everything is just going to start crumbling down, that we are going to fall back into temptation. We're, not, we're going to end up going back to the world. When you realize that, that is when you will make sure that you're in the word each and every day. That is when you will make sure that you're prayed up knowing that this is a spiritual battle. And if we aren't feeding our spirit, then we're gonna end up falling back into the world. And when you also realize that that is the solution to all our problems, that is when you will start to seek the word like nothing else matters. That's when you'll seek the kingdom first and all its righteousness, knowing that everything else will be added onto you. Because it's a necessity, it's a need in your life. It's like water or food. You're gonna need to eat that food or water to stay alive. To stay alive in the spirit, we're gonna need to spend time with God. So that's what keeps you disciplined even when you really don't feel like it. That's why God tells us to fear him because the beginning of fear is wisdom. When we fear going back to the evil, wicked ways, that is when we will start to be disciplined in the Lord. When we fear going back into temptation, when we fear like failing and trying to do it on our own, and we really start to respect God to know that he will provide everything else for us, that is when we will start to cling to him and be disciplined in the Bible, in the word and spending time with him. So make sure that you really understand your need, your necessity for Jesus Christ so that you can start to be disciplined in the word. Number five is to be used by God. Start serving other people. Start putting yourself in situations where you need to rely on God. That could be something as easy as evangelism or even spreading the gospel online. Because when you start to really be used by God, you don't want to be a hypocrite. You don't want to fall back into the world. And you're going to need to read the word so that you know what you're talking about while you're evangelizing the people, while you're serving other people, what we're called to do. Even if you know about Cliff, I don't know if anyone y'all know Cliff, but y'all should look him up if y'all don't. If you know about Cliff and his story, he needed to read the word. He needed to study the Bible in order to know, in order to talk in front of people. Well, it would be the same thing with you. In order for you to start evangelizing or in order for you to start spreading the gospel online, then you really need to get in your word 
And that's why you need to find something that you need to rely on God for. Because now you have no choice but to run to him and spend time with God. Or else you would fall back into the world, fall back into temptation. And you wouldn't know what you're talking about. So these are the five steps that you need in order to be disciplined with this walk with Christ. I know, of course, this all of this may not be easy, but it may be a process because I know that's how I started. Always reading the word every single day. I wasn't always praying every single day. But I got to that point by realizing the necessity of reading the word. And when I did that, that's when my life really started to change around. So make sure that you are applying these five things with your walk with Christ so that he can really start to work in your life. Again, thank y'all for all the support. If you want to support, links down in the description. But regardless, I appreciate all y'all for watching. And of course, I'll see y'all in the next one. So y'all stay blessed.